You may have heard people talk about grief recovery. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Especially when said by a Scotsman, grief recovery. <laughs> the problem is that I'm not sure we recover from grief. We recover from a sore throat. We go through an uncomfortable week, but then we get over it. A sore throat doesn't change your life. Life goes on as if nothing has happened. You recover. I hope you won't think I'm quibbling over words, but I do think this is important. When someone who has been an important part of your life dies, you are changed. You're not the same. Life may go on, but it's different. I don't think we recover. I think we reorganize. I don't think I'll ever really get over it. In fact, the more I think about it, I don't really want to get over my mother. She has been such an important part of my life, for all my life, not just these last four years. Why would I want to get over all she has meant to me? I will go on. I will reorganize my life now that she's no longer here, and I will be fine. But recover? Hmm. You recover from a cold or a virus, and life goes on as if nothing had happened. It's not really a big deal. But my mother was not, is not, and never will be insignificant. I don't want to recover from her influence, even though at the same time I realize I have to go on without her. Most of us go through life believing ourselves to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, maybe. Am I the same person that I was when I went to high school? There's much about me that's the same, and whether that's good or bad is a matter of opinion. But in another way, I'm not the same. Certainly, I don't look the same. This was me when I was a little kid. Cute, huh? Here I am when I was in high school. And this is when I got married. And then here's a picture with me and my wife. And then one with Carolyn and the boys and myself. Here's me just a few years ago with my boys. And here, as you can see, is me now. <laughs> Maybe by the time you watch this, I'll look different again. But will I be different? All of these are pictures of Bill Webster. But I have changed, not just physically, but in other ways as well. So our next grief guideline. After a significant loss, a part of me is missing. So I need to discover, who am I now? Usually, people begin to find their identity, who I am, in their teenage years or in their 20s. We often define ourselves by some of the roles and relationships in our lives. Certainly, I thought I had found my identity. I was Scottish, a heritage I'm proud of. I had a career. And often what we do helps to define who we are. I was a husband and a father, but I was also a son and a brother. I was, by definition, relatively normal. But when Carolyn died, that definition of normality changed. Any major loss, whether by death, divorce, or disaster, or simply just by circumstance, changes us in a personal way. For what do we lose when someone dies? Fundamentally, we lose a part of ourselves, that relationship, that role. Suddenly, I'm not the same as I was before. And when that long taken for granted self is shaken and challenged by a significant loss, it can be difficult to find out, well, 
who am I now? Consider this important grief guideline. It is important to realize that we are not just products of genetic makeup. Who we are is determined by our experiences and by how we allow them to affect us. Life doesn't always work out the way we expect. Some experiences are good and other things are very difficult. The good news is that we don't have to let disasters define who we are. We all have difficult experiences, but it's what we do with them that makes the difference. Some people look at a glass and see it as half full. Others look at the same glass and say, it's half empty. The truth is, it is actually both. It just depends on which aspect you choose to focus on. Consider this grief guideline. We can find meaning even when the circumstances don't seem to make sense. You may be struggling to find meaning in a situation that seems to make little sense. Some things in life don't seem to have a lot of meaning. There's a tragic accident, a natural disaster, an act of violence or abuse. You see pictures of people starving and children suffering. Bad things do happen to good people. Think about it. How can it be meaningful when a drunk driver causes an accident that takes the life of a little child? Maybe it's just me, but I find it increasingly difficult to see a lot of meaning in some of these situations and circumstances. Oh, there's always someone with their cliches and easy answers. But if we're really honest, it just ain't that simple. I still have unanswered questions about my wife's death. Why do good people die prematurely? And my biggest question, why did two little boys have to grow up without a mother? It just doesn't seem fair. And the fact that they had a dad who cared and looked after them and by the way, that they turned out just great, still doesn't make the event itself meaningful. Good may come out of certain things, but that doesn't make the thing good in itself. Why do we always have to think that everything is meaningful? In my own life, I've had to accept that life isn't always fair and everything that happens is not necessarily meaningful. But I've also learned that even though certain things may not be meaningful, that does not imply that my life doesn't have meaning. We may not be able to find meaning in the circumstances, but can I find enough faith to believe that there is meaning for my life, even though some of the circumstances may not make sense or seem to have any obvious meaning? Rather than looking at the situation and asking why or what the meaning of the event is, we should ask, how is my life meaningful even in the light of tragedy? Acceptance means being able to believe that my life is meaningful even though it may not have been perfect or turned out exactly the way I might have liked it to. At first I prayed that mum would get better, but as time went on, I found myself praying that she would have a good death, whatever that means. I didn't want her to suffer, and I prayed that the end would be peaceful. In that, God answered my prayers. Will you brood over what you've lost, or will you give attention to what you have left? One of the biggest dangers is that sometimes we can spend so much time grieving what we've lost that we fail to appreciate what we still have. So it's not just the experience that determines who we are, it's what we do with the experience that defines us. And the good news is that we get to decide that. You can choose to be a victim or a victor. You can choose to be bitter or to be better. We may not get to choose what happens, 
but we do get to decide what we're going to do with what happens. The choice we make helps define who we are. Either way, it's up to me. My advice would be to take some time for yourself every day, at least an hour. Myself, I get up an hour early and I sit out in the garden and just give myself time to center. Yes, and sometimes to cry. I think it's very hard for men in our culture to cry and to give yourself the freedom to do that. If I cry in the garden, I don't cry in the car, and I think that's safer for everyone. So give yourself permission to grieve. And if that means crying for 10 minutes, that's okay. <laughs>